My name is Mary Marr. I'm director of the Dublin Adult Learning Centre. We're an adult basic education centre that provides adult education for more than 500 students each week with people from 35 different nationalities. Um, our programmes start at the very beginning where people may be improving their reading and writing up to and including a level 5 QQI. My name is Martin. I came here about two and a half years ago. It gives you great credit that you can go out today and you can do things for yourself that you wouldn't be able to do years ago, you know. The type of work I want to get into, I need maths and computers. Gone as the days when you can walk onto a site and leave in your CV, you have to do everything by email. And so I needed maths and the computers to get into the line of work I need to do. In the last 20 years, this community has really changed. In the last census, 40% of the people describe themselves as being from an ethnic minority. In terms of celebrating the white paper, I think there was so much in the white paper around social cohesion, community development, cultural development. And I think a centre like Dalk is a space where people from this community and who've made this community their home can come together, learn together and live together. Coming up to the election, we did a whole course on voter education that included understanding the PR system and our students understood that and there was a real energy around voting but voting wouldn't necessarily fit into a QQI. It was the first time in years that I've ever voted properly. They showed us in here what it all meant and it meant a big difference when you were going into a voting place, you know what I mean? And I think loads of people need to know that as well. More funding I think would allow people uh, to do more of that community development work and oftentimes you know we kind of count what we can measure but often what counts can't be measured. My name is Pamela Latimer. I'm the Training and Education Manager here in Longford Women's Link. Uh, we are based in Longford Town and we provide um, training and education to the community at large. So uh, we offer courses that start from interest level courses and then we can move into the accredited courses which are level two up to level six and we are a QQI registered centre. Uh, we also provide ECDL and then we would run specific training then that might be industry standards such as first aid manual handling. And more recently we've moved over to LOVE. We also work with IT Carlo and provide access to third level courses here on site in Longford Women's Inc. I suppose our aim would be that we make education accessible to people. We have an on-site childcare facility and we also have a mobile crash unit. That mobile crash they're able to set up uh, it's all regulated so we, we we would if we can manage it we will put childcare in place for for learners and we, we also have a, a bus we own and we have our own drivers so again where it's possible we are able to put transport in place for for learners but again all of this comes at a cost and funding for all that sort of thing it's difficult to access my name is Paula Gary. I work in Cackins Nursery, which is part of Love for Women's Link. I am an ECCE full-time play leader and I've been here 19 years. I've been progressing all these years. did my level 8 through Carroll College that was based here. So it was all from here that I got my education. Funding is, uh, is, is uh, it's a huge issue for learners, particularly if they want to move past level six. So for our degree course, um, we were very lucky to have MBE Skillnet come in and support learners in, in that. It's all about accessibility. It's all about making it possible and giving that learner the confidence to move forward. My name is Lorraine O'Connor. I'm the LTI coordinator here in Exchange House Ireland National Traveller Service. So the LTI is basically a local training initiative aimed at young people between the ages of 16 to 35. We work specifically with members of the traveller community. Our objective here in Exchange House Ireland is to work with young people to um, provide the best educational service we can to provide the, the best support. We're a multidisciplinary organisation. But our main goal with working with young people is to focus on what they have to give. Being a former participant myself, um, I left the Community Employment Scheme three years ago. Now I'm back as the CE supervisor. So I do know the benefits of 
the supports that can be put in place. I have um, some students who would be from 18 years old um, up to the age of 33 and I find that with my participants um, their reluctance in order in, in able to get out there into the workforce would be because of um, being, them being turned down and, and many doors closed. There's a restriction kind of like towards us um, as travellers within society. If we can connect with communities and if we can connect with employers and say, listen, can you give us a chance and give our young people a chance, I believe that there's a lot of, um, a lot of good work that we can do out there. I was kind of finding a struggle to do it first and then when I got the hang of it, I found it easy enough. Like. Yeah, I'm like to learn about law, law school. I have a course in September, so I'm going to do that first and see what happens from there. Unrestricted funding is something that we really like, you know, it's something that we really need and really want. We're, we're very often in the community sector working with maybe, like for instance, we, our computer systems probably really need updating. And we're constantly fighting that challenge for funding. Exchange House Ireland has the connections um, within our own organisation to be able to build the confidence and to be able to build a platform for it to be able to say, this is your next step. My name is Valerie O'Connor and I'm the horticulture tutor here at the Moy Ross Community Hub. Core skills or community education is as much about getting people out of their houses and getting them to come somewhere and meet up once a week and just get together. So I think the impact, it varies from person to person. For some people, just getting up and leaving the house and turning up somewhere, is that's their achievement for the day. And they're just so happy to be sitting around a table or standing around a, a bed and doing something. For other people, say, someone whose health wouldn't be the best, for them to, to hold a tool and start digging and yanking weeds and stuff out of the ground is very beneficial because they're getting fresh air and exercise. It's great for the mental health for me anyway. And uh, today was my first time out in the garden in here. I suppose it's about interacting with people and learning coping skills as well. There's a lot more communities applying for funding now, we'll say, for community ed classes. Uh, so with the communities getting bigger and looking for more hours, uh, it takes from what we had years ago, like 60 hours in 2004, which was 16 years ago, and maybe 30 now. It's okay getting the tutors through the LETB, but we say there's lots of other things it takes for to, uh, to, to run classes. I started popping over to the school to see what classes were running and I signed up for everything. DIY, keep fit, jewellery, skin care. Because I did those classes, I started doing QQIs. I have a major ward now in business, major ward in healthcare, and I'm currently working towards major ward in community development. Community education is a vital part of the community. It helps to build up people's self-esteem. Um, it brings people together. It keeps that important little bit of community alive. We are in Castle Reed, County Roscommon, in the training centre of Roscommon Women's Network. Here we deliver full-time uh, training courses, um, QQI accredited level five information processing, uh, QQI level five retail sales, uh, employability skills at level three and four, and we're planning to start Retail 5 Healthcare in May. Uh, alongside the accredited training, we also have non-accredited community education. Today you'll see we have our 10 women in their Cycle Up Club, which is uh, where they come in and they make high quality, beautiful, saleable items from old textiles and old clothes that are donated to our charity shop, which is upstairs. And that's turned into a little enterprise. So it's been, it's been a huge success. In the future, I'd love to own my own bakery. You get a different variety of running a business or what's involved in the company side. You know. It was transformative for me, I suppose, because of the pace for me that I was able to go at. You know, I eventually went into full-time education. I have a first-class honours degree and I'm now working full-time and I'm very much um, part of strengthening the community that I'm now working in. I often wonder where would I be if I hadn't come on that scheme and come here to the Women's Network. I don't know where I'd be, of course, but I don't think I'd be where I am. The other challenge is like we have, all our flooring has been taken up. We've suffered severely from ongoing flooding since before Christmas. 
Funders are great and it's absolutely brilliant to have. But when you're in your wellies and you're on the ground, you are depending on volunteers and people working here late at night trying to keep the water out. I know that sounds exceptional, but if it isn't flooding, it's something else. We always seem to be keeping the wolf from the door. We're, you know, make, having to make money through our charity shop, worried about a month that the money's down. Um, we're too reliant on goodwill and, and volunteering and trying to raise our own money. We need a little bit more support and we could do magical, transformative work. Uh, we're doing it, but we could do more of it.